bird on a tree. I'm just sitting here. I got time. It's clear to see. Hey, how you doing? This is Iowa Hunter here at the Rock and Bee, and uh, I haven't been on for a little while. Like I said, I'm building a house down here on this ranch for my, me and my family. It'll be my wife and my dad. He's 92, and uh, he went in the hospital. He's been in there about six days, and he's been out of it. So he did come around today, and uh, I think he's going to be all right, hopefully. So we're going to get him in here. But uh, I just want to give you a little bit of a, a picture of what the place is going to look like. I made it all uh, zero entry so you can get in there without going up any steps. Real nice. Sits up on the hill all the way around 360. Got a nice breezeway. 12 foot of back window coming out of the dining room overlooking the land and then we go back uh, oh, almost a mile back three quarters of a mile back on this property but we're gonna go down and check out some of the stuff we got growing here and see how it's coming along all right this Iowa hunter we're coming down one of my fence lines here and uh, as you can see on the right side that's a green screen from Arrow Seed all the way down. If you watch my previous videos, I'll give you all the dates planted. And then down at the very bottom, on the left, against the fence, running all the way down there, that's green screen, about 12 foot of it. <clears throat> and they overlap. It's made to channel the deer and also give the deer a uh, screen. You can get in and out of your hunting areas. It keeps them, uh, when they're in that fantastic food plot down there from Whitetail Institute. You know, they'll be in there snug as a bug. They won't bug, they won't bug out of there. And I was trying to work with this tape measure, but it's not helping me out very much, but I got this set at 36 inches. And uh, it's hard to see in this bright sunlight, but you can see that that green screen's, just, you know, a good three feet tall right now. And, uh, I'm sure there's other places that's, you know, taller, maybe some that's a little shorter, but this is supposed to get 12 foot tall, so that screen should be a good deal. I know Whitetail Institute makes something called Conceal, and I see some other guys plant that on their uh, videos, and uh, we'll see how that does, but you can't really compare everything because uh, different planting dates, different weather, different soil, you know, what works good for me, might not good, work good for somebody else. I didn't think this was gonna grow at all because we had so much moisture. And then some other people I've seen just put <clears throat> green screen in here recently. So I'm excited to see what, how the, I mean, uh, Whitetail Institute's conceal. Uh, so I'm interested to see how their conceal does. And, and next year, you know, I may try some of that and go back and forth. I just wanna find the best product for, for my uh, layout here at, uh, at the Rock and Bee, so we're gonna try this this year, <clears throat> and uh, we may split it up and try a little of something else next year. We'll just see if this, how good this works. It's supposed to get so thick the deer can't even walk through it, and they won't want to bed in it or eat or nothing like that. You know, I want them to use it to uh, for good cover, to, so people can't see into my hunting areas. And here, if I come down to the field, they won't be able to see me coming down here because they bed up and. There's been like seven bucks in just that little draw right behind the house. So uh, when this grows up, you know, I can slip in here if I want to down to that artificial water hole I got down here and, and get in a stand and do some good filming or, or uh, you know, take a crack at one to see what happens. Anyway, we'll go on back here and see how the other food plots that are doing that I put in. All right, this is the Whitetail Institute uh, vision I put in last year. It... Uh, of course the kale died out had quite a bit of grass in it i slayed it out i overseeded it with some uh alpha rack plus and uh, i mowed it once this year <clears throat> it got up to 16 inches at the tall part and 12 inches at the leaves and we've had a little dry weather uh after we had a lot of flood or uh, wet weather and uh now we got uh 
the clover's still looking pretty good. It's some of the tops have browned off. I mean, I mowed this and literally almost the next day it uh, it sprouted all back up and and come in really heavy. I mean, you can see how heavy this is. Now this tape measure right here is uh, I can find it in the camera. Right there is uh, set at 12 inches. So you can see it's pretty well 12 inches, you know, all the way across at the leaf. And uh, uh, I did some areas up around the outside and a, a strip coming out the center here uh, over in a V to bring the deer kind of channel them out to the center of the field because I have a stand back there, a power plant. And uh, I don't know, I'm gonna look, but I think that power plant, uh, I think it was the water, but I think it ended up being a complete flop. And I planted probably over three acres of that stuff. So I don't know what we're doing up on the back half, but uh, around here, everything I plowed up and, and uh, round up and everything, it set. that stuff didn't take hold, I don't think. And, it popped up in a lot of grass and just junk. I did notice, you know, there were some power plants that grew up and on the top fields and uh, it looked like the deer just nipped it right off before it could get going. But this stuff really never took off down here, you know, and I just think it was too wet. So I just got a grass drip running up through here, which we'll end up getting round up out of there and I'll put probably some brassicas or something in there. But uh, I, I don't know, I'll have to think on that a little bit more. I wanted that power plant for a little cover around here also, but I'll probably come back in and slay this field now. It's it's doing really well, but I do have some, you know, slay these grasses out over here. And I have some spots, there's a spot there. So I have to do a few spots of, of grasses I can get slayed out of here and uh, I'm gonna walk over and check my tank out and change these cards out and then we'll go up top. Yeah, I'm getting into the artificial water hole I dug in earlier this year. And uh, all that green around there, that, that was all mud and I showed it in my previous video. That came up in like a week when it was raining. But uh, I just went to Shields and I bought like the cheapest throw and grow perennial throw and grow that I could get. And I threw it around here and you can look how thick this got already. This ain't just mud with deer prints all over it now. It's, it's nice and grassy and I've seen deer coming in here and laying down next to this tank and uh, they're actually bedding just over behind this. And uh, you can see how crystal clear the tank is. Oh, there's a goldfish right there. They keep all that mosquitoes and bacteria and all that crap out of there. And, uh, of course, you got your stick in there for any kind of rodent that might get in there and try to drown so they don't die in there and contaminate the tank. But yeah, I'm real happy with the, you get a, just a, whatever the cheapest perennial throw and grow and throw it down there and give it a shot. I mean, I did nothing. I threw it on the ground and I end up with that just like in no time. And that's better than having a big mud hole. Anyway, the tank, it's, uh, you know, we've had a dry stretch here for a while and Whenever it rains, it seems like it fills it all the way up. It looks like it might be down two inches, maybe, 110 gallon tank. So it's still good, clean water for the deer. Got some mud in it, so they ought to be loving it. Uh, I've had a camera on it. I've had it always in the wrong position. I've been tied up with my father and I threw this camera on here and because and, uh, the other one wasn't tripping. And they were either just done drinking out of it or, or just starting to drink out of it when it kicked off. And last time I didn't have this in the right spot, it wasn't catching them at all. But uh, I'll see what happens. And then we're going to head up top. Here's some more of that green screen. Running all the way down that fence line. Go down. Just a little bit of that green screen goes a long ways. We're going to see. And it's you know, halfway up the fence pole already, so for long, the deer won't be traveling along this fence. They'll be in this, in my woods over here where they belong, see? And it gives them a lot more cover back. I mean, we got tons of cover, but 
It'll give them more sanctuary. That way they know nothing can see in there. And I've ran it a couple other places too, but we're gonna run back. I'm cheating today because I've got to get back up to the hospital and uh, I don't have much time out here. <clears throat> They're delivering some stuff out here, so I need to unlock the garage. So I got on the four-wheeler, but uh, normally I huff it back here. But we'll run up top, see how we're doing up there. All right, Whitetail Hunter here. I'm back on my first food plot. And in the previous video, if you could have remembered that this section just got planted this year, it was, I had a bush hog it. It was full of trees and everything, round up it several times. And I had a pretty good clover batch growing in here. Uh, it's still got clover, but I didn't have the grass. And I come up here, I haven't been up here for a little while, and uh, the grass, we haven't had no rain at all. It's been drier than hell. The ground is cracked up, as you can see. And the grass must flourish when it, you don't get no rain. And uh, like I said, the clover's in there. But for right now, I think I'm gonna let it go and uh, see what happens. You can see there's, there's clover all over. There's just a lot of broadleaf grass and a few weeds in there, which I know I can knock that right out. But the clover turns a little brown, even down on my other food plot that's really flourishing well on the second year. We've had some pretty high heat and no rain. We got all the rain the first part of the year and then no rain, so we'll have to see what happens. So I'm gonna watch this. I don't wanna spray it when the, when the clover's getting a little drought going on right now either, so I'll move on up and see what how that uh, Alpha Rock Plus is doing. All right, I've been in one of my upper food plots. It's, you know, over a couple acres. And I dissed it all the way around the outside with power plant and you know I virtually don't see nothing going on. Grass grew back in there and the Alpha Rack Plus in here. It uh, took off and my last video you saw was doing really well and and uh, I just have a lot of broadleaf weeds growing up in here and a lot of grass. I mean it's in here. But the grass and the broadleaf have come in here and taken it over in this dry weather. They thrive in this dry weather and the clovers have more of a hard time. But everything's in here, it's underneath the canopy of grass and broadleaf weeds and I don't know when it's this hot and uh, the plants are still kind of young. I hate to come in here and spray them now. I think I'll wait and get some good rains in here and then I may come in lay them out but for right now I'm gonna leave them the deer in here thick right now anyway I'm gonna go ahead and switch out a couple cards and uh, as you can see over there I have that uh, green screen running clear down from the bottom of that draw all the way up the hill see that open it goes over the hill and down the other side and it keeps this whole food plot over here sealed in where somebody's riding across that Hay field over there they can't even see in here which keeps the deer in here like i said i can be in here in my stand and have 30 deer under me and if somebody rides across that here on the deer, deer see them they'll spook out and head back over into the woods so that stuff's going to work out good i don't have any doubt i'll be able to get this up but i'm going to see what the rest of the plots look like all right now i'm back here to the chupa plot which isn't ginormous or anything but uh it's got some weeds growing in it too, but it does have a lot of cheaper growing in it. Like I said before, this will be your cheaper plant. And uh, it has a triangle stem on it, and it grows nuts down out of the ground. And I'm not sure if it's at the nut stage or not. I really don't want to dig any up right now. It's not time, I wouldn't think, but. You can see I have a pretty good little batch of chupa coming in here. It's weeds don't seem to be bothering it all very much. We had 
some wet weather and some dry weather and everything and it's uh it's going keeps going so you know i may plant a little bit bigger plot of that next year we'll see what happens but it doesn't look like it's too awful hard to grow anyway we'll move on back to some of my other power plant and see if it took or not well, here i am back on my back area still and i had over two acres probably three total with all the buffer strips and everything a power plant and I don't know, I mean, I think because of all the rain, but I had quite a bit of money invested in seed and everything. And I don't see where it's really doing that much. I mean, nothing's over ankle tall. A lot of it's weeds. <clears throat> a lot of bare ground down there. And if anything, I overseed it compared to the instructions, but... I'm interested to see some other guys were trying it this year, but we just had such a tough spring rain every single day that uh, we just don't think it liked it. It's a shame when you put that much work into something, and uh, I'm sure they're out here eating us. There's greens. I got some my cameras on here, but I did see some other power plant that they had nipped the tops off of when it was still growing so but you know out of three acres or so i should have got some i think a little bit better than what i got but i'll probably have to chalk that one up to the rain i guess everything else seemed to be pretty good conditioned and i have to see what if i try that again next year or go to something else anyway i got another area a finger that was doing real good in it when i first planted it in power plant but the deer might overgraze that area too if it started up, but we're gonna take a, go back there to take a look at it after I pull a couple cards out. All right, this whole area was Whitetail Institute uh, Alpha Rack Plus or uh, Whitetail Institute Clover, and then I overseeded it with some Alpha Rack Plus. It was kind of bare. Back in here was really heavy clover earlier. We still got a lot of clover. This drought shrunk everything down and it brought the broad leaf and grasses up. And if you've seen in one of my other videos, these plots look like they were going to be, you know, killer. And uh, it's just this dryness has stunted this clover down and uh, holy guacamole. We got something going on there. Looks like a baby, maybe a baby squirrel or something. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Mother Nature's about the best. Anyway, so uh, I don't know. If everything got kind of stunted out here. It's kind of depressing when you put all that work in there. Whenever you see them dirt areas like that, I, just, I got several of them. Those are usually areas where the turkeys get in there and take the dirt bath, drum it up. I passed several of my fingers that on the field. Anyway, so I'm gonna hoof it back through the timber here to my other food plot and check it out. Maybe it'll be a little bit better than these. A little disappointing, but you know, the clover just kinda, you know, I'm sure with the rain it'll pop right back out, but it kinda shrunk up and and the weeds popped out and overtook everything. But uh, I think we'll still be all right. It wasn't that easy last year either, so I'm just first year getting established. Anyway, I'll keep you updated. This Iowa Whitetail Hunter. All right, this Iowa Whitetail Hunter here. It's rocking me, and I'm back at the little spot, the food plot I put in called the hole in the wall. But here's a property line fence. And that's a green screen I threw up along there all the way over the hill and down the other side. They love this little meadow right in here. They come in here and wander around and fight and play around in. I left this just natural. And then I uh, put power plant down this finger both ways. And actually it popped up and 
did pretty good right at the beginning and I don't know I got a sneaking suspicion that they ate it off a lot when it was growing but you know if you get something like that that you can't even get out of the ground we'll see what she's doing now I see a lot of grass turkey dusting all over there So you know, look at that, good example, right there. That plant was going there and they ate the top of it right off. So I don't know if that's what we're going, going on in here. Uh, there's still some growing in here, but I can't see this being a big, feeder for him. There ain't some, nothing in here over top of my boot hardly. Like I said, he gets some hits and misses with food plots. And I tried this in several different areas. as buffer strips and main food plot. <clears throat> it's an annual, but you know, it won't be long. It'll be time to get my fall plots in here. So. The deer in here is thick anyway, but I'll be thinking about my fall plot already. Get in here and round up this, just get up out of here. Anyway, I guess that'll be the whitetail hunter out for today. Not every day is the winter, I guess. Like I said, I haven't been able to get out here. I've had a, my dad in the hospital and had other things to worry about. And, you know, it could be a lot worse things than just having a food plot not turn out quite how you wanted it. So, life goes on. We'll keep up the battle here at the Rock and Bee. You guys have a blessed day. Like a bird on a tree. I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together